What's going on, A pluses, nerd mixes? It is your boy Indy Uchiha, man, and I'm here to bring you the review for episodes 10 and 11 of Batwoman. Time off for good behavior and arrive alive. Now, uh, no, we're a little bit behind, guys. We're gonna catch up uh, with these next three episodes right here, and he'll be right on time when everything's going. Been a little bit under the weather and been trying to do my best to stay ahead but i kind of like the fact that it came out like this because to me these 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 three episodes that are upcoming 10 11 and 12 were kind of a three uh i want to say like a three episode arc to deal with the angelique situation <clears throat> um angelique to me was a anchor something that was holding uh, Ryan down from being everything she could truly be because she was always worried about what Angelique was doing, where Angelique was going, and how to help Angelique out with everything that was going on. So this has been pretty interesting to me, what goes on with what, what's been happening with this and how they uh, wrapped up uh, Angelique's arc when it comes to season two uh, by the end of episode 12. But we're going to get into 10 and 11 right now. Um, watching them solo... I wasn't really into either episode, but like I said, when I went back, because like I said, been a little bit ill, trying to recover and everything like that. And I went through all three um, episodes at the same time and, and watched all of them like uh, back to back. Uh, they made a lot more sense to me and were a lot more entertaining to be able to binge them like that. But before we get into the review for episode 10 and 11, let's pay some bills, man. Because A plus hero report, A plus so more phenomenal over here at A plus opinions now has a Patreon and you can show your support, join Patreon, become a patron, guys, and help us bring you better content, uh, build up the aesthetics, uh, get a little bit, a lot more going on and what's happening. We're here. We got three tiers, one dollar, five dollar and ten dollar gives you access to the score to audio only versions of our pods just in case you can't because you know you're just watching your phone while you're driving so you can go ahead and connect that to your radio hit that mp3 and listen to our beautiful voices as we discussed everything nerd and geek pop culture so make sure you guys go ahead and check over there and just to let you know it's a plus hero report reviews and a plus more phenomenal news and reviews so you're getting two for one two for the price of one you can't beat that. Am I right? Uh, we got a bunch of patrons over there already um, interacting in the Discord, having a lot of fun. But um, uh, we in episode 10, we start the introduction of who will be Black Mask. Roman is here. Um, everybody has seen Black Mask when it comes to um, the movie, the Birds of Prey movie. We've seen him in different uh, Batman movies and cartoons, stuff like that. Uh, we now actually have Black Mass. <coughs> Roman Sinoia, Sinoius, right here in Batwoman as a main fool. Uh, the show's been building up to the new villain reveal for a while, almost during the whole entire first half of the season. And now we have him viciously putting his plans into play. And he really feels like he doesn't like anybody getting in the way of anything that he is doing, man. It is nuts how sadistic uh, this character is kind of nuts how sadistic they let this character be on the CW show. I wonder if that's why they moved it to the eight o'clock slot instead of having it at the seven o'clock slot. It, it's kind of crazy. So it, we know Batwoman's been trying to get rid of uh, the false face gang, Black Mask gang, uh, and trying to rescue Angelique from him. Uh, she ended up doing that. She ended up successfully shutting down like the snake bite production for, I think it was like three weeks, maybe. Could have been more, might have been less. Uh, but she, her real thing is she's trying to find out who Black Mask is. So right after she stopped, uh, shut down one of the little facilities or whatever, she gets on the city news channel and she's asking for Black Mask identity. Unfortunately, Gotham is crooked and they're not going to give it up because you know what I'm saying? Snitches get stitches. Um, this was an interesting plot point because I feel like Jacob Kane has been uh, kind of the downside to what has been going on. It used to be Mary to me. Mary used to be annoying, but Jacob K seemed like he has no meaning or anything in the show right now. Like he's just without him trying to kill Alice or finding out who Batwoman is when it was his daughter. It just seems like he's out of place. But uh, Black Mask need him out the way, so he's attacked by the false face gang in his car, and then he starts having flashes 
uh, and images and stuff for him and Beth, uh, him saving Beth instead of, you know what I'm saying, walking away. Uh, when he awakes, he realizes that he's been injected with snake bite. So snake bite basically um, lets you hallucinate, uh, has people hallucinate the worst moments, like, and then lets them play it out in an alternative way that would have made them happy. So you can see where that could be really addictive to somebody like Jacob, who's been going through this issue anyway. So he goes and sees a specialist to try to get help, a specialist who knows how to deal with these type of problems when it comes to uh, dealing with snake bite, different narcotics and stuff, being just somebody who deals with addiction. Um, so the only problem is, is that it's Enigma. Enigma, as we know, was Sophia's associate, the one who made uh, Ocean and um, Alice forget all that stuff about it. And she's, as you saw, she's now working on Kate Kane. Uh, we know that Kate Kane's alive and they're doing something to her memories or trying to get something out of her. Um, so I don't think uh, Commander Kane understands the type of trouble that he's in when it comes to that. Um, Enigma seems like she's going to help Jacob and tells him that he needs to mend the relationship with his remaining daughter. Um, I thought she meant Alice, but in turn, he goes and tries to mend what he needs to do, <coughs> excuse me, um, with Mary. So Roman is an official. He has a lot of money. He, work, he works for the city and stuff like that. Um, he's an investor in the police department. Uh, big money, big money guy, big money guy. So he brings some uh, snake bike to Jacob and asks him, can he use this? You know what I'm saying? Dispose of it properly and stuff like that. And so Jacob throws it in the drawer, not thinking nothing about it. And um, when he goes later to speak to Mary uh, and Mary and he was telling Mary, hey, look, I want you to open the legitimate clinic. I even pay for it. Mary doesn't want to do that because people won't be able to afford like the services and everything like that. She won't be able to help the less fortunate. She has to do everything uh, by the book. And she just can't forgive him for everything that he's done, like shutting her down in the first place. So when all of that happens, Jacob gets thrown into this whole spiral and he ends up, <coughs> sorry, he ends up going to use the snake bite that uh, Roman left for him. That, that's nuts to me. Um, but it it is really hitting close to uh, things that I've seen, you know what I'm saying, growing up when it comes to people getting um uh addicted to different substances and stuff like that um in the meantime with all that's happening on um sophie i think she found out where like black mass headquarters was so uh but black mass is giving like the run around to the crows what she finds is already abandoned it's a bunch of dead bodies all over the place i mean he it, black mass doesn't care he even take his own you know what i'm saying uh henchmen out and stuff like that is nuts what he does um you have a weird team up because it's just, to me, it's just weird for Sophie and Julia to team up. Um, I don't, it don't really feel like they like each other, but they, they both, especially after Kate uh, confessed her feelings that she did to Sophie. So, uh, but it, it's a, it's a weird thing with Julia because we know that she's her and Sophie are trying to trace the steps of where she went back and <clears throat> somebody has been messing with Julia's memory because there's a lot of stuff she don't remember. Or Sophie's like, maybe you were drank too drunk to understand what's going on because you were mourning over what happened to Kate, right? So uh, Alice asked for Julia to meet her, right? Uh, Alice needs help to find Enigma. Um, and she feels that everything that's going on with Enigma would explain Julia's memory loss, and she had to come in contact with her at some time. Um, Julia has an interesting conversation with Alice, and they figure out that they're both both hurting from Kate choosing someone else over them. It's like Beth, it's like uh Alice, it's like Kate chose the old Beth, the alternate Beth from when uh crisis happened over out over uh and mary over alice and then uh she chose sophie over julia but i think alice is trying to forget more than just that she wants she wants all the pain going she wants all the hurt going she doesn't want to have this conscience in the back of her head she just wants to be set loose so they come through with a breakthrough when they figure out that um the good doctor same doctor that commander kane uh saw was the one that uh, did all this crap 
you know what I'm saying? That was going on. <coughs> but when when they when they track her down and Julia kind of confronts her, backfires. Uh, Enigma injects the the thing into Julia to make her forget what's going on, and convinces Julia uh, to like leave, like leave the country. I think she goes to like England or Berlin or something like that. Like she just leaves and just moves. Um, Alice ends up going to see him, but she wants to forget Ocean. She wants to forget Jacob Kane. She wants to forget everything <clears throat> just so she could be who she wants to, you know what I'm saying, be. Um, we move on to Ryan still keeping in contact with Angelique, trying to get her to turn in the person that really did the thing. And this is all still episode 10, by the way. Um, and she's also helping to launch community center um, with Jordan Moore, uh, Mary and Ryan. Um, you have a reporter who uh, believes something's going on. There's community centers being attacked and everything like that. And that's when this new mass man kill the vote turns up and actually attacks the community center. Uh, there's something that this reporter knows because he's being, and it's, it's something going on because he gets fired, you know what I'm saying, from the place he works. And they're actually against the reporter at first because they feel like he's bringing bad press for no reason onto the community center that they're trying to build. But um, when back, when they finally found, figure out that he might be telling the truth uh, and go to talk to him, he ends up being uh, attacked by Killer Vote. Batwoman fights him off, but you know, the reporter, I think, what is his name? Spence gets hurt in the altercation. Then they have to go to the shut down little hospital that Mary runs in order to save him. Uh, Luke is able to get a partial print off the gun in order to find who it was. And uh, it comes off of Mickey K, who's been in prison for like two years. Uh, Ryan goes to speak to him. Mickey K has a laceration from his last fight with uh, Batwoman, but he's never left his cell. So it looks like the Edgewater prison itself <clears throat> is letting prisoners out to destroy the community programs because private prisons profit off at-risk children falling through the cracks. I got that exact quote because I thought it was an amazing quote from... Uh, what did I take that from? From showsnob.com. That was my favorite quote on how that was put. It looks like Edgewater Prison itself is letting prisoners out to destroy community programs, private prisons, profit off of at-risk children falling through the cracks. That hits really close to home from where I'm at because we have no uh, programs to help at-risk children. And it seems like they just keep cycling through, you know what I'm saying, the same system what goes on. Uh, Batwoman ends up confronting the CEO who pretty much says, yeah, I'm doing that, but it's a stalling tactic. The goons from Edgewater attack Batwoman with like a bunch of different lightning guns. It looks bad until Luke shows up with a lightning gun of his own that he got earlier from the goons, forget how to use it. And then they successfully end up getting the CEO to go to prison. Uh, Ryan ends up going back to talk to Angelique about the prisoners breaks uh, to ask if Angelique knows about Mickey K. Um, she doesn't listen. You know, I'm saying she does listen to her reason. And this time she finally talks to Sophie to get her deal. And Angelique has to be off the grid till Black Mask is caught. But Black Mask is always one step ahead. As Angelique and Ryan, they say goodbye to each other. Angelique is going into protective custody. The Crows escort is ambushed. And the false face game takes Angelique so she can cook snake bite for them. Great episode. Great episode, like I say, when I watch it in unison with the other two. Uh, as a standalone episode, I wasn't feeling I didn't know what they were doing. I thought they were spending too much time what was going on with Angelique, but I didn't understand that the story that they were telling through this three episode arc was uh, basically like uh, kind of like an Angelique redemption story and Ryan actually letting go of Angelique. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, guys. I'm just so under the weather right now. I feel like no matter what I do, I can't get better. But uh that was episode 10. I want to get an episode 11. I took notes for episode 11 uh, so I could tie these together pretty quick. Um, episode 11 was named Arrive Alive. And this is 
a Fast and the Furious esque uh, episode of Batwoman. Um, this is a little bit more entertaining than episode ten when it stood alone by itself. Like I said, all three together are amazing. Um, it's basically they have to go undercover in order to save uh, Angelique. <clears throat> um, and it's like while Batwoman is trying to take down Black Mask, um, Black Woman Batwoman is trying to take down Black Mask. Ryan is trying to save Angelique. You know what I'm saying? She's torn between the two things. The overlap is causing a lot of problems uh, in this episode. And uh, Angelique probably doesn't really ever need as much help as Ryan thinks. She's found a way to stay alive even after being kidnapped. She offers to make State Bike. Uh, since Black Mass doesn't have OSHA's formula, you know what I'm saying? Maybe that'll keep her safe since she's the only pos- She's the only one who knows, like the process of how it goes. She doesn't know how to finish the process, but she was being trained by ocean. You know what I'm saying? Kind of, but you got fancy cars riding around, robbing stuff to find the, uh, the special ingredients needed to make the snake bite. Um, Batwoman hauls one of the drivers out of the cars and it ends up being Sophie, which is, which is nuts. Uh, Sophia went undercover on her own kind of in order to try to, uh, uh, get the point, the meeting point, and see where uh, Black Mass was because these drivers are being given um, GPS. They're being tested. They're given GPS to uh, steal certain ingredients and then go to a drop off point that they don't know until they already had the, the ingredients. <clears throat> so Batwoman just actually messed up like her chance to, you know what I'm saying, help Angelique. Um, Jacob. Commander Kane doesn't like what Sophie did, takes her off the uh, case and gives it to Russell Tavaroff, who is somebody who would just go through guns of blazing, all he'll set loose, doesn't care who gets in his way in order to get the job done. Uh, Sophie gets kind of desperate in order to try to uh, solve the issue of what's going on. So she accepts Ryan's request for help. And lets Ryan drive Mary's fancy new car uh to be able to um enter the race as one of the drivers not the race enter the farm as one of the drivers in order to get the uh mission so that she can go save angelique um luke in the bat and uh sophie uh ryan i get all these names and stuff ryan thinks she's been driving really well in the batmobile right but Luke actually has a, a, a device in the Batmobile that lets him assist her with driving. So that's what they put into um, Mary's car in order to help uh, Ryan be able to do what she needs to do, right? Because what they're going to do is they're going to put a tracker into one of the canisters of the chemical, of the fear toxin that they picked up in order so they could trace uh, where they're going to go. But <clears throat> she had to stop and pull over. She stops and pulls over. They're going to know she stopped thinking something's wrong. They're going to red flag her and she won't be able to continue the mission. So Luke takes over while driving. So Sophie could do that. It, it was actually a really cool plot device in what they use for that in order to, uh, in order to see what, what she was going to do with that. Um, I'm, I'm going through my notes right now. Um, uh, Sophie didn't think Ryan's plan would work. So now she's going to fight the, uh, yeah, she's, uh, Sophie goes to fight the false fang, uh, false, false fang, false face uh, society on her own. Goes south amazingly. Uh, she ends up getting captured, you know what I'm saying, uh, by Black Bass. Black Bass is going to kill her. Now Team Batwoman has to save two people, right? Uh, Black Mass doesn't let slip that he shared his motivation behind creating the False Fang, uh, <coughs> False Face Gang with uh, Batwoman. No, I don't think, was it Sophie that got caught? I'm lost. Hold on. My, my notes are all jumbled. I can't even understand my own handwriting right now, guys. Um, who gets caught? Yeah. Sophie gets caught. Batwoman's already there to help Sophie escape. They start fighting Black Mask together. Unfortunately, she still has Angelique. Threatens to kill her. If they don't let her go, there's just no winning with this man. Uh, whatever Black Mask showed Batwoman and Sophie wasn't even true. Angelique's busy on working on Snakebite. 
Uh, she hasn't perfected the drug. Uh, later, Sophie goes to inspect Mary's car. And of course, she finds, yes, when they end up getting out of the situation that they got into, uh, Ryan forgot to take the device out the car. Sophie got it out the car. And the whole thing about that is that the conversation that they're having on there means that uh, Sophie is now going to know who that woman is. This whole time this is going on, Alice is impersonating Enigma. The Enigma, fi uh, like taking her clients, stuff like that. Enigma finally steps in. And that's when Alice asks Enigma to help her forget everything she's going to do. But she says she has to do it step by step because she does it all at once. She could make her go like insane on what she's supposed to be doing. So the plot thickens, right? Um, because first she tries to erase Kate. Her efforts to erase Kate only, let, only lets Ocean pop up. But then the plot thickens because Enigma Alpha's door is broken down by the real Ocean, who Alice is shocked to learn is still very much alive and angry that Alice tried to kill him. Of course, Alice uses this moment to get the upper hand. They duke it out until Enigma uses a code word to disable the both of them. So that means she embedded a code word inside of them to shut them down when she first had them to make them forget their memories. It gives her enough time to escape. Also restores their memories of each other. Sophia isn't going to be happy, guys. Sophia isn't going to be happy. So they start uh, reconnecting after their memories start returning. And this ocean is way different from the ocean we saw before. He forgives Alice immediately after uh, for stabbing him. Um, she's surprised. She's relieved. But this is a complicated thing because this, to me, is one of the best storylines in this show is the relationship between Alice and Ocean. And this is by far uh an interesting predicament with them being able to get their memories back and knowing how they really feel for each other and going through that so uh this episode like even these two together back to back uh made me feel a lot better than watching them solo and i think it's because of the fog that i've been in um with the medication and stuff i'm on for my illness that um uh, trying to watch each episode separately drag, but when I actually got to sit down and watch all three in unison, it made a lot more sense to me what was going on, so I really enjoyed it. So that's my review for episode 10 and 11 of Batwoman. What do you guys think? Put it in the comments below. Let me know how you think this is going. What is your favorite relationship on the show? Mine is Allison Ocean. Um, are you liking uh, Miss Leslie as Batwoman playing Ryan Wilder? Um, do you think that Angelique was a little bit too much? Do you think she needed to be involved with the plot line of this season? And is Sophie doing enough? Uh, is, is Jacob Kane going to die this season? There's a lot of stuff that could be going on to make this very interesting. So you guys let me know what you thought and I'll be right back at you with it. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share on all our platforms. You see them up there right at the top, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at a plus opinions. Don't forget to follow me everywhere at nerd mix alpha man. And until next time, as always keep it a plus. This has been a nerd mix. India. If I can find the thing. Bye.